Hello everyone and welcome back to Mog's Workshop and what have we got here? A Prezi for me? What can it be? Let's have a look. Oh my word, it's a replacement screen. Much better this one. Look, much less bag-like and weird and thick. This one's super thin. So thin it's transparent. Goodness me, I wonder how it works. Oh, I wonder if it works. Let's plug it in and give it a go. Fingers crossed. Here we go. Yeah, and there we go, it does work. My desktop is looking rather shiny and snazzy on this. I wonder what a video looks like. Ooh, this is an interesting video. I wonder who made this one. As you can see, I've hooked it up already. Same sort of thing here. Lots of nano tape. Actually, a lot less nano tape just behind the screen because that's what caused the problem. And it works. I think we can move on to something else now. Headache over. So let's have a look at something new. What's this? It's a wet palette. Never used one of these before. There's a layer of sponge underneath. You put some water on it, a bit of paper on top, special paper, and it keeps the paint from drying out. And these things here, yeah, these are the new Citadel synthetic range of brushes. First time using these. Let's give them a bash with a little bit of a bad and black. Yeah, and as you can see on the palette, the paint sort of bubbles up there, doesn't stick to anything, doesn't dry out, and makes sure it keeps its consistency, which is super handy because these sorts of paints do dry out very quickly. Look at that nice coat of black paint, and now we're moving on to the oils. Let's get a splodge of red to start off with. Yeah, and what we're going to do with this is we're going to kind of blob it in in a few places here. Why are we doing this? Well, because weathering is very rarely monochromatic. In fact, if you keep it monochromatic, then it all looks like a bit of a muddy mess. and You can't really see anything, especially no scale tends to pop out. It just all kind of mixes together into a big and, well, you know, quite frankly, depressing soup of sadness. And we don't want that because, look, you know, what might happen is a red fire extinguisher inside the cockpit rubs against something grey, leaves a little mark behind. Yeah it all adds to the flavour of our little cockpit. So what we're going to do here is we're going to rub this in and you can keep rubbing in, you can take as much of it off as you want, you can put more on and we can use all kinds of different colours to kind of create a nice interesting palette of different textures. Here we go, let's go into fast o vision here, we've got some blues going on and what have we got here? We've got a kind of splodgy greeny mess and then some browns here, you never know what all sort of things leak into a plane, you know oils and kind of muck that happens happens when you open the little canopy there. So we put it in. If we think we've put a little bit too much, we can always rub it off later. And don't forget, there's all sorts of other things going on yet, like transfers and so on and so forth. And this really does add a backdrop of depth for all of that stuff. Otherwise, it kind of hovers into sort of nether space and you never really get a sense of dimensions. But look at this. There you are, all kind of grottified, but with colour. Talking of colour, let's whiz some magic. Bing bang bong, let's make it happen. Oh, there you go. You didn't really need to see me in real time painstakingly picking out all of these plastic parts with paint, did you? Oh, that's a lot of P words. Hang on, I think I've got one more for you. Yes, let's have a look at our palette. There it is. Doing a grand old job. Very much recommended. Yeah, and we spoke about transfers, so let's have a look at them. We've got a nice little caution and warning panel here, so what do we do with it? Well, first thing we do is cut it out as neatly as we can and drop it in some water. About 30 seconds will do. Now we pre-wet the surface it's going on to and with a little q-tip there we slide it across you've got plenty of working time here it takes absolutely ages to dry and once it does it is in place you squeeze out the water with the end of the q-tip if you want it to go faster or you can leave it where it is and it'll evaporate over time i wouldn't recommend that though because the transfer has a tendency to kind of wibble around on its own if you leave it unattended don't know why don't know where it's trying to get off to but it always tries to move so squash it before it gets the chance yeah where are we now we're back on the base yes the base is all painted, put a little a couple of feet on it there, and we're screwing in all of these parts for reels now. Then they look neat. Here is our rudders and our main joystick, and of course we've got, yes, here it is, it's the throttle. We had to wait quite some time to put this second Adafruit trinket on because it needs to fit over the top of that little joystick there, which is going to be holding our throttle lever. Let's make sure it works and it's not fouling on anything underneath. Look at that, just hidden underneath there. Ooh, that was a tight fit. Super stuff. And what's all this? Well, we've hooked up the little joysticks there to make sure that they work, but this wire is far too thick. We need this. Yes, we're going to use enameled wire. And in order to strip enameled wire, you need ooh, little special strippers. These are super fun. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to take a piece of our uh, little wire here. We're going to give it a little scrapey scrape. And before you know it, we've got a little end exposed there. And we're going to tin it off to make sure that we can use it 
it in our connections. Let's try that. Here we go. Zooming in with the mega camera here. We can see that the solar is going on. Just need a little tiny blob there. That'll do. Give it a little bit of heat. And before you know it, yes, there it is. These little wires are going to be really helpful for our project. You'll see why later. Oh, what else is helpful? Well, this is helpful. You remember those little hypodermic syringes we used earlier? Well, we used the end of them, didn't we? We used the little needly part. What we're using here is the rest of the syringe to deliver some flux straight onto the connection that we're going to solder. This will really help the solder to flow and join these two parts together without all of that horrible why is the solder sticking to the end of my soldering iron business that we've all become accustomed to if you've done any electronics or soldering in the past. It's most annoying. Flux solves all of these problems. Look at that. Straight on. Yeah, and here's one of those power rails we talked about a while ago. So what we've done here is we've wired them up so they're just all in a line there. How do we do that? Well, we took some parts from things we've snipped off in the past, resistors and whatnot, and we've laid them behind all of these little pins and just soldered them in place. Always handy to keep all of these little offcuts. You never know when you'll need them. This is a perfect time to use them. And if we didn't have these little power rails, well, we'd have to return all the connections down to one little poor sad pin. Whereas here, what we can do is we can send them off to the little rails up there at the top. Look at that. Also, you can see our enameled wires. Well, they retain the shape they're bent into. Oh, you can really see the advantage of the power rails here. Look at that. Lovely stuff. Lovely and neat and so is this, I think you'll agree. It's our fantastic little fire button. Yes, we had a few problems with that. Kept on falling off, but no more. Put a little nice blob of red paint on the end there. Something that really says bang. And what we've got at the back here is, well, that's held in place with a little bit of super glue. We've got some extra cabling on either side there on the little wires so that when you move it about, it doesn't stretch and strain. There's plenty of slack. And if you can imagine using normal wiring for this, that kind of rubber coated stuff. Oh my word, it would be all over the place, springing and sprunging everywhere and causing a right mess. This is much more tameable. Okay, now what is this incredibly out of focus, incredibly big pen? Well, it is liquid flux. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to draw it on the little connections of the tiny buton because we need the flux to be in place to help us do this. But if we use the big blobby flux, well, it'd be too much. It'll go everywhere and cause a right old mess. So the pen enables us to deliver a tiny little bit for our tiny button. So easy does it here. Don't want to get the soldering iron too close to the plastic button, otherwise it'll melt it in double fast time. Wait a minute, have we got it? Yes, I think we have. A little bit of solder backwards and forwards, and we're on. Excellent stuff. Let's do another one just to prove it wasn't a fluke. Hmm, does this cable get hot when you're holding onto it? It sort of does. Yes, a little bit. Not too bad. You can always wear gloves if it gets a little bit too warm, if you hold the soldering iron for a little bit too long. But we got away with it. Ah, look at our little button. Quite neat. Managed to solder a piece of fluff to it. That's nice. So what's next? Well, what's next is to put it in the cockpit, of course. There it is, pushed in place, but there's quite a big gap around. How are we going to fill that? We're going to fill it with whatever the heck this stuff is. T7000, Zan leader, no idea. What does it do? Leaves a big black blobby mess. I like it. And here is a non-trivial amount of soldering. Yes, here's all of our buttons, quite a lot of them. This is okay, though. A little chill exercise putting these together. Nice and easy. Oh, and this looks normal, doesn't it? Goodness me, as you can see there, the weird glue has done a wondrous job. It dries just like plastic. I'm a big fan of it. Comes in all kinds of colours, I think. No idea. Anyway, look at this. What we've got here is an enormous number of cables that need an enormous number of treatments to make sure that they're not going to poke us in the eye every time we move this thing around. Hmm, what to do? Anyway, first, lights. Really, really small lights. There it is. We need to put this into our model before we can tame the these beasts, and where we're going to put them is in all these little holes that we have pre-drilled everywhere. Let's see, what's first? Okay, first things first, let's label all of these so we know which one's which, we don't have to keep tracking them with our battery all of the time, and then we'll put them in place. Yeah, that's not very difficult to do at all. As you can see, I put some gloves on there because I was getting pretty tired at this point of being poked with little sharp wires. Oh, we do need a battery actually, right at the end here, we best check, shouldn't we, that it still works, and it is actually the right color that we want to put in. Otherwise, that would be very upsetting because once we put that strange glue on it, it's never coming off. 
So yeah, let's have a look at it from above. There you go. The little LED is recessed neatly into our cockpit and underneath the sealant is doing a wondrous job of holding it in place and also making sure that there are no shorts. So yeah, what's this? This is canopy glue. This is much more down to earth stuff. Basically just PVA, dries very clear. Using a blunt cocktail stick here, we'll get a nice little ball on the end here with a little bit of surface tension action. And then we're going to dab this into the recess where the LED is to create a little pool of glue. And what this will do is diffuse the light. We can even paint it later like a little lens if it's too shiny. Ooh, talking of shiny, what's this? This is mirror paint. Let's open it up. Never use this. This looks fun. Shake well. Hmm, okay, I'll be the judge of that. Go on then. Here we are. Is this what you meant? And is that enough? Well, it seemed to be because look at me applying it here with that little brush. And as you can see, it goes on like a mirror. It really does. Very shiny, very impressive. So what's all this for? Well, it's for these little cockpit illumination lanterns. I've put the little LED on the end of the wire there, wrapped it around and created a nice big lens with a lot of that canopy glue so when it goes on with that mirror it should reflect nicely let's try yeah shiver my timbers there you go look at that a nice ghostly green glow i think this will look just the ticket for our cockpit should set it off nicely yeah and these are also hooked up to our power rail so no need to bother the little arduino with a few extra connections they're wired up at the same time as well so a single switch should do both of them at the same time. Neat stuff, what's next? Well, what's next is to reevaluate our absolutely apocalyptic looking nightmare of wiring. Yes, we've got all of the buttons and all of the lights there. Look at all of this absolutely shambolic nonsense coming from left, right and centre. Yes, we need to find a way of wiring this up and then corralling them all in place. Where to start though? Well, there's no better place to start than from, well, anywhere really on this thing. Let's just pick a place and go from there. It's around this sort of time that you start to realise why real cockpit avionics are so complicated because there is an awful lot of wires, but at least these ones aren't flopping around like a dead snake. Yes, we can bend these wherever we want, just go one by one, checking which pin is supposed to go with which wire, and then putting it in place. Yeah, and before you know it, you've wired up all of the buttons, and what a colossal pig's breakfast of a nightmare scene this is. Oh dear, it's going to get worse though, because we need to wire up the lights. Let's do that now. Oh, my eyes, they burn. Yes, what we've got here is something that needs to be fixed. So, how to fix this? Well, this is Easy Line. Other brands available. It's basically some kind of sort of a knicker elastic, really. Basically, it's very stretchy and very strong and very excellent. Yeah, we're not going to use it for its intended purpose. That is to make sort of things like, you know, telegraph lines and so on on model railways. They don't break when you poke them with things. What we're going to use it for is, well, just to tie these wires up because it's nice and strong stretch it like this and we can snip it off and if we need to we can move things around it's not like string it's got a little bit of give in it should be perfect let's go ah uh, ooh, a slight downside there it does leave a little bit of a rubbery residue upon your fingers but i think this looks much better all easily accessible should we need to tweak things but not quite such a disaster zone i actually quite like all of these cables something like the back to the future delorean about it that i quite find appealing don't know why, but it does mean that if I do need to fix a pin, I can get to it, and it does look snazzy. So what are all these pins doing? Well, they're doing nothing until we program them, and we're going to do that right now. We've got our plan, we've got our model, and we've got our computer keyboard. So let's get typing. Yo, oh, jolly good job, let's hope that works. Okay, what's this? Well, this is our little golden ribbon cable for our tiny little exquisite monitor, and we're just putting it in place. This is super fiddly. If you remember, we made these little clips in order to stop this ribbon getting in the way when you're looking over the cockpit. Can't have that kind of thing going on, so we're using a pair of tweezers here, and we're gently, gently, we really don't want to damage this cable, and it clicks into place. There you are, look at that. Nicely under our control now as we now take the little screen and we put it into its little holder. Well, I say that because then it got stuck, but one little oh, click there and well done. We're all free. We're all in place. Let's hope we never have to do that again. 
done. Excellent. Right, let's move on. What is next? Oh, we're almost there. We've got the base done, the little screens in there, the little cooling fan for the screen and its little circuit board there in place. So yes, what we need to do is push these two little chaps together. We're going to use those little locating stumps that we created earlier. We're going to wiggle and waggle until we find just the right spot. Oh, it's a little bit awkward, but once we find it, it'll just go like this. Click, how terribly satisfying. Yes, they're all together, and if we need to take this apart, we can, of course, at any time, because they're not glued. Oh dear, if they were glued, that'd be an absolute nightmare. Let's take our throttle lever, and let's find its little home, push it in place, it kind of works like a key. If you want to take them apart, just remove the throttle, and away you go. And it's screen time. Yes, it's upon us. We are now going to put this in place. It's the last major component. It's the last component, full stop. This sim is almost done. We're going to take this on its little stand and slide it down on its guard rails. The screen is now in place. Our little miniature sim is complete. So let's have a little look round, shall we? We've got working buttons, we've got working lights, we've got working controls. Our miniature flight simulator is ready for its debut. I wonder if it'll work. If it did, it would be utterly ludicrous. Full demo in next episode. Let's have a sneak peek, though.